unrooted and ungrounded times, John gets some text and phone calls. Sometimes, you know, probably not really practical time for him, but but John stays grounded. Amen. And I thank God for not only John, but every single mature Christian that has stayed the course and has stayed in this building because we youngins need grounded Christians. And if you don't stay grounded, church, a lot of us will go astray. I thank God for mature Christians. And I know there is a push in today's society for the bigger churches. And I'm, I'm afraid that a lot of times our older Christians get left out. But the older Christians have withstand or stood the test of time. Amen. They know what it is to get on their knees and pray. Amen. They know what it is to fast. They know what it is to read the Word. And I praise God for every single one of you that are in this building that have been there and done it. Amen. And when I look at John, that, that's, that's John to me. That's what he is. He, he has been my solid rock uh, on more than one occasion. And so I'm going to turn this over to him. We're going to pray. Hopefully they can have the video ready. And we'll go from there. Father God, I feel your holy presence all over this place today. Father God, you showed up because we showed up. Mm -hmm. Father, your Bible says where two or three are gathered in the midst, there you will be. Mm -hmm. Father God, we're claiming that promise. That right now your Holy Spirit will continue to move on this place. Just as you moved upon the deep of the waters on creation week. Father, move upon the deeps of our hearts. Upon the deep of the congregation. Father, move all over us. Move us, dear God. Father God, we want to feel you. Not just once or twice, but every Sunday we want to feel you and know you and hear you. Father God, we want to have church with you because if you're not here, we need to go back home. Father, I'm asking now that you will anoint John from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Father God, touch his tongue from the coals off the altar of grace, dear God. Give him the words and the wisdom and the thoughts to give us the message that we need to hear today. There is someone that needs to hear what John's going to give us. Not his words, dear God, but your words. Not his thoughts, but your thoughts. Not his actions, but your actions. Father God, do something miraculous in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. amen. You can go ahead and play that. That would be great.
that uh, I watched that video and it just does something to me. Uh, I'm so happy to be here this morning and uh, I thank you all so much. Um, my friend right here on the second row, we were going to do uh, some of those African dances. And we're going to do that one day, but I didn't bring my African drum today. <laughs> but I can tell you, one day we're going to step out in this aisle, and if you don't think you should dance at church, I'm sorry. You're going to have to forgive us. Because I believe when you get happy, and I'm happy this morning, uh, I just don't think there's anything wrong with singing and dancing and raising your hands uh, to God. And I'm telling you, I came here this morning with a uh, fear of timidity, but I am so on fire. That music just got me uh, Amen. nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. And you know, I'm here this morning. Eight, eight years ago, uh, God formed in the Garden of Missions. And uh, my ministry partner is Misty Phil. She couldn't be here this morning. Uh, I'm the vice president of in the Garden Missions. And uh, it has been such a blessing. And I, I live missions Every day I wake up in the morning and I'm thinking about Africa. And I hope uh, before you leave, you can come down here and look at some of my friends here, the elephant in the line and some of these. I've had an elephant chase me. There's nothing more exciting than that. Uh, but anyway, um, I have to tell you something, though. Uh, even though I love missions so much, I could not do it. If it were not for this church and not Pastor Joel. Because I have to be fed every week. And I know that you're the same way. And I'm too old to be fed milk. I need to be fed meat. And when I come into this church, I want John to get up here. And I want the Holy Spirit to work through him. And I want to feel those words come out. And I can tell when he gets up here, the Holy Spirit is working. And I need that. I can't operate without that. I can't live without that. And so I'm just so thankful for this church. And the second thing I'm thankful for, and I know Joel will agree with me on this one, is I have a spouse, Susan. She doesn't go with me uh, to uh, Uganda, to Africa, but she supports me. And uh, I started out going to Africa two weeks out of the year. And then it became four weeks. And now six weeks. And they're wanting me to go in a couple of summers for three months so I can teach some of these guys that are there who don't have jobs how to build things like a, like building a bed frame or a coffee table, things that they can sell. And uh, But Susan has never complained. I've taken those vacations and gone to Africa when I could have gone to the beach with her. But I just thank you so much. You cannot, you cannot serve God in ministry uh, if you don't have a wife or a spouse who is supporting you. And I'm, so, I'm just so uh, thankful and grateful. Uh, for that and, and oh my goodness I'm so glad I have this I, I need that I can't believe that Joel gets up here every Sunday you can't imagine how frightening it is to stand in front of all these people uh, but last last May or June we got a message from Uganda that the school that, that I think you're somewhat familiar with the Pride Infant School the district and it, and, and it is one of the poorest villages that we have been in. And the district was going to shut them down because there's this old building. And it is old. And it was crumbling. And they said, if you don't tear it down and rebuild it, the school's going to close. Well, we heard that. And I, I just could not believe it. I, I just did not. I never believed that God would allow that school to be closed because there's 330 little children and probably 30 of them can't even afford the $200 per year fees that they have. In, in, in Uganda, school is not free. Well, it's not free to us. We pay taxes. But, but there, uh, if you don't have that $200, $300, your children don't get an education. And in Africa, the way out of poverty uh, is education. And they know that. And those little children from the earliest age, if they get to go to school, they appreciate it. And they listen and they learn. And I just could not believe that God would let that school close. Last year, our church uh, donated Bibles for every little child at the Pride Infant School to give it a Bible in. And a couple of years before, we provided their very first school books. And we've given them shoes. And we gave them one year a thousand gallon water tank so they could collect the water when it rains 
uh, out of the guttering. And we've done, been, and God has enabled us to do so many things at that school. And I just could not believe that God would allow that school to close. So uh, there's no other ministry uh, that ministers to that school. So in the Garden Missions, we began to pray. Last June, we began to pray and think, how can we raise $20,000? I mean, that is more than our entire budget for the Garden Missions, okay? Uh, we're just a small ministry. Uh, but there's, there's, uh, there's at least one church in Winchester that has a million dollar uh, endowment. And so we made an appointment and we went to that church and we asked them, we showed them pictures, we explained to them everything about this school, but they said no. So we tried everything we could and we meet once a week and we pray for our ministry. And so we met and friends, we cried out to God. Do you know there's a difference in praying and crying out to God. Uh, the pastor mentioned this morning, um, um, uh, Egypt was crying. I mean, the, the, mm, the Jews were crying out to God to save them. And we cried out to God that day because we've done everything that we could think of to get that money for the Pride Infant School. We didn't know anything else and we cried out to God. And the next week, uh, we had people call and give us $19,000. Praise God. I love it when I see God moving like that. And so we said, okay, this is going to be good. And we went to Uganda on our next mission trip. And we met with uh, 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 some architects. And they told us that we can do this. So we finished our time in Uganda. We came back home. And about a week later, we, we received an email and photo and uh, 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 engineered drawings. And it said, we can do this for you, and it's going to cost $150,000. But we're going to build three floors instead of one. $50,000 a floor. Well, what happened to the $20,000? I told Misty, I said, send an email and say, you're fired. <laughs> we did that. We said, leave Pride for School. This is not what God wants. And again, we met and we prayed and we cried out to God. And the next week, a pastor slash architect contacted us. And he said, I can do it for $20,000. Praise God. Amen. God acted again. And so uh, on Monday morning, we wired, we only had $19,000. We didn't have twenty, dollars But we wired $19,000 uh, to Uganda, to this bank account. So we waited a couple of days and we called the pastor slash architect. His name is Ambrose. And we said, do you have your money? And he said, the bank won't give it to us. They think it's laundering money or something. And we tried. They, they wanted us to send uh, a letter on our letterhead. They wanted us to send pictures of our passport. They wanted all these things. Where did you get the money? Where, what's the money supposed to go for? We did all of this. They wouldn't release the money. We met again on that one day of the week. And again, we cried out to God. And we said, we've done everything. But they won't give Ambrose the money. And uh, James, who is the headmaster at Pride Infant School, he called a friend of his. And his friend called a friend of his. And they gave them the money. And you know, uh, it, it wasn't that friend who did it. God opened that door. Three times He answered us when we cried out to God. Let me tell you, when we have a problem, don't be afraid to cry out to God because sometimes He's the only one who can answer you. He's the only one that can provide for you. And it's great that we do everything that we can uh, to solve that problem ourselves. And sometimes God enables us to do that. But when, when, when our back is against the wall, let's get out on our knees. It's okay for tears to flow and to cry out to God. Amen. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. So in December, the, the school got built. And in December, we went over. And we, we met with James, the headmaster. And we had $5 million dollars in shillings, which is like fourteen hundred dollars, it sounds like a dime. <laughs> I remember I went over there one time and I and I got the uh, started getting a cough, and so I went into one of their uh, one of their kind of drugstores, and I said, "How much? How much are those cough drops?" And and they were each bundled up separately, and I picked up like three hundred. 
three of them, and he said, uh, they're $1,100 a piece. I said, what? That was shillings. And you know what? I didn't buy the five of them. And I think it was like uh, $3.50. I mean, but, I mean, that, oh, boy, that anyway. You have to get used to that. But we went over, and so I told James, I says, uh, we have $1,400, and in the morning, I will give it to you. And in Uganda, I don't know if you remember seeing the, the pictures of the brick. They make their own brick. And uh, every brick is a different size, a different shape. And when they build a building, they just lay down the mortar. They come and they, they slap those bricks in there. And then they put mortar in between them and another layer on top. And they'll kind of smooth it off like that. But in America, you know, we, we really just uh, dress it up so good. Uh, but they don't do that there. So they put plaster and they, pl and they plaster the walls on the inside and they plaster the walls on the outside. And then they do what they call an undercoat, which is a primer. So that's what he wanted us to do. Uh, he wanted the inside plastered, he wanted the outside plastered, and he wanted uh, the undercoat. And he said, that's gonna cost 2,000. I said, well, we only have $1,400. That's all we have. I'm going to give it to you in the morning, and we're going to have to cut out some of this stuff. But we'll do it for you this coming summer when we go over there. And uh, do you know when James went to buy the mortar, the price of the mortar had come down, the price of the sand had come down, and I think that might have had to do with the exchange rate maybe. Uh, I think it actually had to do with God, though, because we did every single thing on that list for $1,400. Is God not amazing? We see this all the time. I love missions work so much. You get over in a foreign country, and uh, and you are you're you're totally uh, you know you don't you don't have you can't call your lawyer you know you can't you can't you are. Uh, you're under their, their laws, and sometimes their laws is a village chief. He is the supreme court of that country, you know, so you have to depend on God. When you leave this country, you have to depend on God. And, and also, you get to see God all the time. And that's why I just love it. I just love uh, leaving this country, going to Africa, Uganda, Haiti, the different places that we've been able to go to. So anyway, we finished that work. And uh, we wanted to have a celebration, so we invited, uh, the children were out of school right then, we invited the parents, we invited the uh, mayor, and uh, different ones to come in, and we had the most wonderful celebration. And, uh, and I spoke, and I, there, there's a, a picture that someone at uh, Grace Renew uh, put, uh, put on Facebook yesterday where I'm, I'm showing how I tried to throw that plaster on the wall. I couldn't get it to stick. I felt that every morning when I got there, the real masons that we had there said, John, John, come over here and throw some plaster up there. I did it. And I do it like a baseball. I used to love to play baseball. I'd get that plaster. I'd go, Ow! and it would splatter all over the place. And they would laugh. I was there fun, okay. But I never could get that plaster to stick on, on the wall. But anyway, uh, I, there was a picture on Facebook of me trying to, at least I was explaining to them how I did that. But we, we took a few minutes and we explained how God had built that four classroom building. Every step of the way, we failed, God succeeded. We failed, God exceeded. And He used us, He used us uh, to build that building. And you know what is so important about that? Uh, every year, about 40 new little children, they're only about that big, they come into that school and 40 leave. And every year, there are about 40 little children saved. You know, they might not be the youngest one, they might be this tall or this tall, but every year, children are saved in that school. That's why it was so important that that school not close. Okay, so we had that wonderful celebration. And Misty had it planned where we were all going to turn around and put our hands on the wall. And she had chosen one of our dear friends. His name is Ava. He's from Africa, a young guy. 
uh, so devoted to God, such a heart for God, and she was going to call on him to pray, and he walked out the door to go do something. And, and she said, okay, well, who can I call? I know I can call on John. I, I, uh, John, praise the Lord, that's me. And so uh, she said, but then there's Peter, another young man from Africa. And she called on Peter, and something happened. You know, I passed her this morning. Was he filled with the Holy Spirit yeah. or what? When he's been here singing? I love that. I do. I love it whenever I see the Holy Spirit moving. And Peter, uh, he began to pray. And he was praying in a different, well, he was praying in their language. And Peter's a little man, but he has the most beautiful voice. And he began to pray. And he began to pray faster and pray louder. And it was almost like speaking in tongues because I couldn't understand what he was saying. But somehow I knew I could feel that spirit. And the room was just on fire as he praised God and thanked God for what God had done. And then the last few minutes he prayed in English. And we could understand what he was saying. But that was just one of the most beautiful moments in that whole thing. I wanted to describe that to you. Because what an experience that was. How, how amazing for those few of us who were a part of this to get to see God moving. Is it not so much fun to see God moving? Amen. Is God not moving in this church? Amen. Oh my word, that music this morning, it got me going. I mean, I was so I was so timid when I got here. I, I went and sat down way back there. But that music got me going this morning. And I'm going to be on fire for hours. But I wanted to tell you, um, let me check the time. Oh, my. Okay. Um, I want to tell you just one thing. Next summer, uh, I, again, thank God, is setting us up for something very special. There's a village, and we call it Daniel's Village. And uh, it's a small village uh, near the capital of Uganda, but it's way out there somewhere. And I thought I had seen poverty people. Uh, but I saw poverty when I went there. The first time I, I, I walked up, uh, they took us to uh, this little kind of a, a hut. It was probably like a shed maybe that some of you have in your yard. And that's where this mother was living with three children. She showed us uh, a grave over there where her husband had died a year before. And she was having trouble uh, getting food. Uh, they took uh, plastic bags and they collected them. Whenever they found a plastic bag, like a Walmart bag, they will put it on their roof. And that's how they get their roof keep from leaking when uh, they have their rainy season. And she was holding this little baby. And uh, Daniel is, is one of the young guys. And he has a clinic, a free clinic, uh, for the women and the children of this little village. And he went over and he felt of this, this baby and the child had malaria. Mm -hmm. And this mother had two little babies sitting there and she was holding one. And he said, I want you to go over to the clinic and they will take care of you. Okay, that, that is a village that has so little spirituality, so little God, but it has so much Satan. A Satan has a strong hold on that village. Uh, and and uh, it's a fishing village, and the fishermen, they go out fishing, and when they come back, they abuse the women who do not have husbands. And there's so many young women uh, whose husbands are gone. And those fishermen uh, abuse them, and it's just a terrible, terrible situation. <coughs> and before I left, uh, December, January of this year, Daniel and Ama, two African young men, came to me and they said, John, God has been speaking to us and, and we would like it if you would allow us to form a In the Garden Missions dash Uganda. Mm -hmm. And we would like to have one event in 2019. We would like to have a week of evangelism. And we would like to go from door to door to door throughout the entire village. I don't know how many there are. Uh, there could be 100, 200 uh, little houses, families in this little village. 
and the two of them want to go to every house and they want to leave a Bible in every house. They want to share the plan of salvation in every house. And I'm telling you, I can feel it. God has something planned. And I think he's going to bring a revival to that village. I really do. I think this is going to be one of the biggest things that happens in 2019. And we're going to need help from the churches in this area to help us buy those Bibles. They're, they're $5 a piece, and I'm not asking for them today. I'm just telling you, this is something that is going to happen, but I'm telling you, there are going to be people in that village who are going to be saved, and I believe there's going to be a revival that takes place in that village. And they want to do this the week before we come. And when we arrive on Saturday, they want to bring them all together. We want to feed them, and then we want to have... Uh, a time of singing just like we had right here and then we want to come the next night and there's a, a large church that I went to and they have like seven pastors and we want to ask a pastor to come over there and we want to have a revival service and we want to see people come down the aisle and we want to see people saved and I believe that it's going to happen and I want you to pray for that okay if you would pray for that that is going to be uh, in our August trip. We have a June trip and an August trip. So if you would pray for that, that would be just so awesome. And now, I feel like God has given uh, Scripture to us at In the Garden of Missions. It's Isaiah chapter 22. And I want to share just a few things from that because I think it applies to In the Garden of Missions. I think it applies to Grace Renew. I think it applies to each one of us. It is just uh, some amazing scripture. And I don't have time to, to read it. There are 25 verses in Isaiah 25. I mean, Isaiah chapter 22. And somewhere around verse 23, it talks about the fact that God is going to take uh, Jerusalem and he's going to place a peg securely in the wall. And in those days, uh, the homes did not have cabinets to store things in and, and closets and they would put pegs all along the wall and uh, if they if they were lucky enough to have a second set of clothing they would hang that on, on, on the, an outer garment they would hang that securely on a peg and and it would be there when they when they needed it and God said that he was going to establish a peg on the wall and that peg was going to be Jesus Christ and I thought about that. How important is that for us? Because let me tell you, there are pegs all along the walls in America. And what are those pegs? A lot of times, we, you know, we, we look at Israel and they had all these gods and we say, how could they worship all these gods? You know, they would, they would carve out a piece of wood and put it on their mantle and that's what they would worship. But we have more gods than they had. We have all these gods and I'm going to call them pegs. And here's what some of them are. In our government, we have power and prestige. And that is a peg. That can be, that can be a, 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 a little God for some people, gaining that power and gaining that prestige. And we see it in our government. We see it in many other places. We see it in businesses sometimes. And, and, and sports. Sports is a, is a peg that is on the wall. Some people live for nothing but sports. And I was thinking just, was it a week ago or two weeks ago when you had the Super Bowl? Uh, if we put in as much into Easter and Christmas, those two days as they put into the Super Bowl, what can happen? Really think about that. Think about all the money that goes into baseball, basketball, football, all these sports. Some people, many people, make that a peg on their wall. They're not over here on this peg of Jesus Christ. That is their peg. Some people uh, have a peg of, uh, of monetary things, wanting, wanting to have the boats, the airplanes, all this kind of stuff, you know, and it's so easy to get caught in, up into that. I did when I was a young man. You know, everybody wants to have a nice car, and it's so easy for that to get to the point where it dominates your life. There's so many little pegs, people, that can be on that wall, and we can be distracted from that peg right there that we should be, uh, we should be attached to that peg, which is Jesus Christ. But it's so easy to get pulled to the side and get placed on one of these other pegs. And let me tell you what, if you want joy in your life, 
There's only one peg. That's the peg of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, you hang yourself on Him and you will have joy. You can. Uh, another peg is sex. People, there are people who just get caught up in that. And uh, these different pegs, they might give you happiness for a day or season, but you will end up looking for something else. There's people all over America, and not just America, in Africa. And in all the countries, there are people who have all of these things, but they're looking for something else. And right here in Isaiah 22, God says He's going to establish a peg, and that peg is Jesus Christ, and we'll, we will attach ourselves to that peg, nothing else, that we will find the happiness that God has for us and wants for us. That is our peg, people. And we must not get distracted. We must help each other. And that's why, as a church, we must make sure that we are attached to the right peg. Now, there's one more thing in the early part of that chapter. Uh, God sent Isaiah uh, to Jerusalem. And He told them that you have gotten off course. You have all of these idols that you are worshiping. And I've had enough. And I'm going to send uh, an army and it is going to totally destroy Jerusalem. And you would think that they would fall on their knees and they would repent. They would put on sackcloth and ashes and cry out to God, uh, we have sinned and we are sorry. And, uh, and, and, and I think that it's in some way God would have forgiven them. But you know what? They didn't do that. They didn't do that. Do you know what they did? They took and they destroyed some houses that were made out of brick and, uh, and rock and they fortified that wall that went all the way around Jerusalem. And they built reservoirs to, uh, to store water in case they were under siege by Babylon, which they were, and, uh, and, and they would be able to survive. They wanted to do it themselves instead of turning to God. And you know what? That is a peg. Sometimes, how many times have heard, you heard uh, a man say, I am a self-made man. Everything I have, I got it myself. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what. Everything that we have, we got it from Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that. Amen. And we can become a peg ourselves. We must not let that happen. The peg is Jesus Christ. And that's where we need to turn and we need, need to look at that peg. We make sure that we, that our families, that our church, you know, there are churches uh, that, that worship all, all kinds of things, uh, and including prosperity. You know, but our church, I know, especially when we have a pastor that is so full of the Holy Spirit, uh, we're going to stay established on, the, on, on Jesus Christ. And that's the message I want to bring to you this morning. I thank you so much for letting me come up here. And I'd like to have prayer, and then I'd like to ask our pastor to come forward and to take over the service. Our Father, uh, Lord, we just love you so much. We just thank you for all that you have blessed us with. Uh, Lord, we are, are blessed beyond measure, beyond anything that we could possibly deserve. Lord, I thank you that you've given us the opportunity. Uh, perhaps there will be a partnership between In the Garden Missions and Grace Renewed. And Lord, we can not only serve right here in our, in our own church and in Martinsburg and throughout Virginia and West Virginia and, and Kentucky, but, but uh, other countries as well. I thank you, dear Lord, that you have given us the opportunity that you have given us to serve you. And dear Lord, I pray that this morning there might be someone here in this service who has taken their life and they've gotten off course and, 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 and their peg, their thing of importance, their God has become sports or it has become sex or it has become money or it has become uh, power. And Lord, I pray that right here in this service this morning, they might close their eyes and they might call out to you and repent, ask for forgiveness, and they will place their eyes on Jesus Christ. I pray that there's someone here this morning, dear Lord, who is seeking you. Today is the day of salvation. Dear Lord, I just pray uh, that even those of us uh, who perhaps have strayed, that we will come back 
and get on that narrow path uh, that leads to that holy city. One day, uh, oh, I can't wait there, Lord, for that day to come when we hear the sound of the trumpet and the shout of the, of the angel and we will be drawn up to be with you uh, forever. Thank you, dear Lord, for this day. Thank you for this church. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us a place to meet in this movie theater. I love it. I love everything about it because uh, you chose for us to be here for today. I know there's another place out there somewhere, but that's tomorrow. And I love today. Thank you for everything that you have given us. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.